Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Truth Seeker. This is the Truth Seeker Podcast. Excited and delighted to be with you guys again today. We got an awesome conversation planned for you all. So we're going to get into some good meaty information. We're going to uh, discuss spirituality, all things spiritual, the authentic self, um, how to uh, live in that, how to bring that into fruition, the dreams and things that you have for yourself. So we're going to get into some of that stuff here shortly. I uh, want to say a huge Thank you and shout out to all the Patreon supporters. Like I said, like I say every time, I could not do this without you. This is a listener supported show and uh, I really appreciate you guys. So I want to give a quick shout out to everybody supporting on Patreon. And so some of the latest patrons that we have, I'm going to go ahead and call their names out for this week. Uh, Shout out to Russell Bell. Thank you for coming on board. Connor uh, Smale. Smiley. (laughs) I always butcher these names. I'm sorry, but thank you, Connor, for coming on. Cameron Galloway. Thank you, Cam. Uh, We've been friends for some time following my work. Thank you, brother, for coming on and supporting. And uh, Isis Gate, thank you as well. Scott Rutherford, Blake Snap, all of you beautiful people, uh, thank you for becoming patrons. And uh, you guys are my enablers. You guys help me bring this content to the people. So thank you. Couldn't do it without you. If you'd like to support please head to patreon.com backslash truth seeker. There you get access to my entire discography of music, over 200 songs, currently working on new music. I put up a new song Saturday. Uh, there's a new song off of the color ZP and I just put up a new song last night. So just dropping music back to back. You get access to all the unreleased music before uh, it's released to the general public. There's a bunch of new stuff there. As I get done with a song, it's immediately uploaded to Patreon. So you get access to all of that. The archives, you also get access to our Thursday night School of the Mystics, which is the community aspect of what we're building here, being able to uh, come together on a one-on-one basis, learning with the audience, with the community, with our tribe, um, tapping into our psychic abilities, our sp- uh, listening to our spiritual ear, learning what that sounds like and how to walk in activation where we can hear that inner voice, the inner guidance of the Holy Spirit. And in a safe environment, speak that out and see if it means anything to anybody. So we're pairing off in the groups and doing that. And it's been a whole lot of fun. So if you're looking for people to build with every Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central, by becoming a patron at any level, you get access to that as well. Patreon.com backslash Truth Seeker. Without further ado, I'm going to bring on today's guest, Miss Gina Gardner. How are you? I'm great. Thank you very much. And you? I'm well. You're joining us from London, the UK. Uh oh. In the UK. Okay, I got I got you now. Okay, you kind of uh, we had a little blip there for a second. I think we're good. 
So yeah, you're joining us from London in the UK. So uh, power of the internet, or or lack thereof at times. But it's 10 a.m. here Central. What time is it where you are? It's four o'clock in the afternoon. Four o'clock in the afternoon, making it happen. Well, um, we're talking about the uh, authentic self, how we can fulfill our life's purpose and there's different tips and techniques that you've developed over the years to actually how we can do that or bring that into um our, our life or bring it into um manifestation if you will we're going to go through some of that stuff but first let's just give a quick um background on what you do and what you bring to the table and how you got started um so i've been in the business of empowerment in various ways for well over 30 years. I was the principal of a large school for 21 years. Um, and just before I became the principal of a school, I had a serious ski accident. Uh, and the result of which So I ran my school mainly from the wheelchair. I've learned to walk twice as an adult following failed back surgery syndrome. But the great gift that came out of that was creating a different way to develop leadership in the pupils, in the staff, with parents, which relied upon people recognizing their own power. They could and empower people to be truly their genuine best selves. I think awesome. we might be having... Okay. In, the in, internet's kind of uh, messing up a little bit. We're getting stuck here a little bit with the feed. Right. So you're teaching uh, people how to find their true purpose, how to feel more confident... Where does that, does that tie into spirituality for you? Absolutely for me, because if you are, if you recognize your spiritual power, then in order to do that, you need to recognize that you are enough, just as you are, that you can have the confidence of recognizing that if you choose to, you can tap into universal knowledge, that you can recognize that we are truly connected and for me, all of that starts with self, that having the confidence to be truly, genuinely, authentically who you are and recognize that you have the most amazing power if you choose to step into it, for me, is the start of spirituality, the spiritual journey. But it then that, if you like, acts as the conduit to, the, for me, spirituality is all about connection connection to each other, connection to the natural world, connection to those things beyond this world that most of us only dream of. Okay, so we're talking about the authentic self of that person that we want to be. What What is that? Is that something that, is it a divine right as humans that we, we are, um, you know, we have these superpowers or whatever the case is, or is it what we're, that person we're wanting to create deep within those things we want to say or we want to express but we feel limited or we're you know nobody will accept us is that what it is it's like learning to be able to speak your truth and feel I confident it, is that who we are i think the answer is yes and it's also more than that so when we come into this world as tiny children we have a sense of awe and wonder we believe that the universe and people are intrinsically good and we have no sense of limitation. Children, babies don't think, does my bottom look big in this nappy? Mm -hmm. They're just joyful and they explore the world. And I think as parents and teachers and um, other people have an influence that we forget, we, we move away from that absolute understanding that we are joyous, 
fulfilled human beings. And for me, the spiritual journey is all about learning. Um, and if you like, it's going full circle and learning again that we are truly amazing um, beings if we allow ourselves to be. That if you are genuinely in your power, it's not about having dominion over somebody else. My power doesn't mean that I have to diminish your power. We can both step into our true, genuine power and collectively be stronger than individual. And I think one of the big problems for the modern world, well, for the world going back through history, is that people have believed that you can only be powerful if you make somebody else work. That's true. Yeah. Um, okay. and, but for many people, that they believe they have no voice, that, that what they have to say um, is of no account because there's somebody else who's of more account. And I don't believe that we are any more important or any more powerful than the next person. But we are intrinsically, we have the capacity to step into a power which is far bigger than you might imagine unless you are open to receiving that sense of confidence about yourself. And for me, as I say, it starts with recognizing that you are enough. You don't need other people's approval or permission. You don't need other people to tell you how good you are or how you need to develop things. And it's not about being perfect. It is about recognizing that in those imperfections, in those vulnerabilities, that we have the capacity to grow. So for example, Superman, when they first actually created the figure, he had no weaknesses and people didn't get it. People didn't um, warm to him. And so they created this vulnerability around kryptonite and suddenly he became accessible, somebody that we could relate to. And for me, strength and power comes in recognizing our vulnerabilities and recognizing that we, there are areas of personal or professional development that we need or we can choose to work with, but that doesn't diminish who we are. In a sense, that strengthens who we are because life is for me a lifelong journey, a lifelong lesson in terms of how we can be even better. You mentioned um, interacting with the spirit world, right? And so yeah. the, the um, supernatural. With your understanding, um, are there other entities, spirits, angels, guides, something like that, that want us to succeed, that are here to help us, that are almost rooting for us to become our authentic self? I believe there are. Um, for many people, these manifest in different ways. And for me, it, there's two sort of levels, if you like. One is the opportunity to be still enough to commune with our own inner wisdom, which can tap into universal consciousness. And I think we live such busy lives that's so, um, so frenetic. There's so many distractions that for many people, being still enough, being confident enough to listen to that inner voice, your gut feel for it is one way that people describe it, um, that we lose the capacity to tune into that universal consciousness. And, you know, people will talk about my guides or my angels or um, that they have experience of um, people who have passed on and who, um, who they have access to or other, to uh, other beings from other places. I'm very open to that. I, I believe there is more in this world that we can ever understand. And I've had a number of experiences that have led me to believe that being open to um, what opportunities come, being tuned into the fact that there are um, entities, call them what the energies, call them what you will, that are outside ourselves, gives us the most amazing opportunities. Now, I don't want to make this pink and fluffy and woo-woo <laughs> because for me, I think that's done as a huge disservice. Yeah. I think that, um, that you know, people can dismiss people, uh, those who, um, 
who are pink and fluffy about spirituality. For me, spirituality comes with a huge responsibility, a responsibility that we take our actions or lack of them or our, our words that, you know, our very being, we are responsible for how we turn up in the world. And for me, a lot of, 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 of who I am, my purpose is about service. And so money in it and of itself is great, but it's what you do with it. Time um, is wonderful, but it's what you do with it. And for me, um, when you're being in your flow, in your, in, your, in your real power, it's about helping yourself, but also using that to help others. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. So, you know, for one time, you know, for, for one, I guess for, for one aspect to be true, the opposite has to be true as well. If there are those loving entities, God, angels, Christ, those type of powers, then there must be, you know, the, the opposite as well. The dark forces and the, um, you know, negativity in, in, in the world. I think that they coexist for, for, you know, good reason to kind of give us contrast of those different perspectives or those different areas of our lives that How would you in. think something was dark if you didn't see light? Exactly. Uh, and Vice for me, versa. the dark forces give us choice. We have absolute choice in terms of what we do or, uh, or say. And for those things over which we have no choice, for example, I have to use a wheelchair, although I can now walk short distances. But I still have a choice about how I deal with it, how I react to it. So my wheelchair, instead of being a thing of lack, for me, it's my chariot on fire. It allows me, because I always go at full speed. Hitherto, I wouldn't be able to do. So people, many people think that I'm a victim to this, that, you know, I, he or she has to make me happy in order for me to be happy. But of course, if you hand your emotional well-being over to somebody else, you have to put up with what they give you. If you take responsibility for your emotional well-being, then you can choose to be happy or not. Uh, you can choose to be angry or not. And you can choose to manifest those emotions in whichever way you choose to, in a positive, constructive way or in a less constructive way. So I think that for, for us, those are people who are aware that they're on a spiritual path. I think they have, in a sense, the advantage of recognizing that everything is a choice and that you can choose to do those things which actually you know intrinsically are wrong um, and are going to have a negative impact on the world or on pe other people or you can choose not to and sometimes that's a difficult decision because the right decision isn't always the easy decision is it it's almost like you use the things that were uh almost like the bricks that the universe threw at you as stepping stones to uh, get you to the place of your full potential, to get you to your place of your destiny even, right? So there's a lot of people who will have, you know, a lot of things set them back, but it's almost like I kind of coined the, the term that um, um, setbacks can act as a slingshot to propel yeah. you where you're supposed to be in life. And so there's supposed to be that resistance there, right? As far as like, you know, in weight training, you have to lift heavy stuff. You have to have, you know, some resistance, even with the slingshot, you have to pull it back. And there's that resistance there that, that seemed like, you know, oh, you know what I'm saying? Woe is me. You can easily, you know, play the victim, but that's not going to get you anywhere. But when you use that, it can move you from one level of exi existence to, to the next and learn how to use everything in your life, not just the good stuff, but the good and the bad as that whole spiritual um, alchemical process to get you where you need to be spiritually and physically in the physical reality too, right? You're kind of dwelling in both. We're not just high and lofty, all fluffy spiritual yeah. stuff. We have to interact with family members yeah. and, you know what I'm saying, be productive citizens of society and things as well, right? I think it's really interesting how many people... Um, fear failure for example or fear things not going well and yet that's where we learn most isn't it when things all everything's going beautifully and there's flow there's not a great deal of learning going on there's not a great deal of development and i think the human condition is is that 
out of, you know, steel is tempered by fire. And I think we are tempered by experiences. And it is our choice whether we give in and think, well, woe is me, I can't manage this. Or we choose to use that, as you say, as a stepping stone, as the, the slingshot to actually take us to greater heights. And for me, I think there, there's always a gift, even in the most difficult of circumstances. If you look, there is a gift of learning. And I've worked with thousands of people now. People have been abused. People have been through the most terrible um, situations. People who um, have suffered bereavement of loss of different sorts and yet when they pass through that stage and they actually discover looking back that they they have grown and accepted and um gift well for me gifts that come out of that in terms of strength and resilience and insight and empathy um now i'm not suggesting that you would put yourself uh, voluntarily into those situations yeah. but when they come up you have the opportunity absolutely to to see these as a way forward or to close you down and to become the victim is there we're talking about spirituality we're talking about higher intelligence um do you think that almost some of the stuff is set up like a test to prove that you really want it that you're worthy of that calling that you're going to persevere that you're going to make the right decisions and you know because we all have these dreams these desires and things but it's almost like you can interact with it right it's almost you know synchronicities and signs and symbols and things are happening that there's some type of intelligence that's almost mapping this out for us eventually a lot of us come to that understanding is that hold on this is by intelligent design and i'm interacting with the universe and things are lining up for me not against me and so some of those yeah. scriptures from the bible and the other holy books are kind of making sense that you can interact with um you know the entire universe with your mind and you kind of feel like this is a school and there's some a teacher that is giving you these tests and these lessons and once you pass it another door opens and you can kind of graduate and go to the next level and level so there's like this higher intelligence there does that make sense to you at all it makes sense. I mean, there are so many um, people putting out so many theories about, um, you know, is there this grand design? Is it karma? Is it that you make um, your, your, or your situation yourself? But one of the, for me, the number of times that things have happened in my life or with clients where at the time it seemed like the end of the world and that you rail against it and you think this is horrible and yet, with hindsight, when you look back on those situations, you then start to recognize that actually what came as a result of that or another opportunity that came yeah. that you wouldn't have had if you'd taken the first road opens up something which is much bigger and much better. And that's happened so many times that I believe that, that there is a divine and whether it's a plan, but I think I think intrinsically the universe is a, a, a very uh, protective and and positive thing. And if we give ourselves the opportunity to be open, then there are more opportunities that will open up for yeah. us than if we start to see this as the, the universe has got a vendetta against us and the woe is me and you know <laughs> why is it I have all of these terrible things happen. And there is no doubt in my mind that when you are open to possibilities, possibilities happen. That if you focus on the negative, you focus on the stuff that's not working in your life, you appear to get more of it. You get more lack. Whereas if you focus on the beneficence the, and you have gratitude for your life and what's in your life, I mean, even the simple activity of collecting gratitudes during the day can recalibrate the brain. And so life starts to feel much more enriched and much uh, easier than when you're focusing on the stuff that's not going right. So is it a divine intelligence that's using us like a chess board? Is it um, a, a universal plan that we're all fitting in? I don't actually know. And I don't know that it matters, really. I think for me, it's about 
recognizing that if you are being authentically, genuinely your best self, and that includes being open to possibilities, not closing things down because they're uncomfortable, then amazing things happen. And to, to say to your listeners, it's having the confidence when you know, horrible things are happening in your life that you will get through it, you'll have the strength, you'll develop the capacity, and through that you will be stronger and that you will go forward into your life in a much better place. I believe it. Um, maybe this uh, piggybacks into the next question, but um, you have a lot of people who are on the spiritual path and they're very spiritual. You know, they, uh, you know, there's, you know, no limit on the things that you can explore through spirituality. And there's a lot of people who are really good at that. But when it comes to having impact on the earth and um, being able to maybe run a business or be or, you know, be savvy to fulfill their dreams and things like that. There's kind of a disconnect there. And I wanted to kind of maybe see if this is where it ties in at. But you have the five secret um, pathways to happiness, success and fulfillment. Is there does that um, is that a vehicle from, you know, so, so, some of these different exercises and things that you have from the spiritual aspect of what I want, what I desire, and then kind of bringing that into manifestation? Is there a, like a practical way that people can do that? Because I, th I think people get stuck. I think the, the five secret pathways looks at how you can become a strong spiritual being. For me, it's about de developing the spiritual matriarchs and patriarchs, those people who are going to take control. I think one the issues is that for many people who are on a spiritual path, they think that they cannot be worldly. You can't be spiritual yeah. if you're charging. You can't be spiritual if you've got a business. And actually, that's a belief I don't, not one I subscribe to. <laughs> I think, you know, if you go into a, a shop and you buy a loaf of bread, somebody's made that bread and you pay the value for that. And for me, um, people having a, a successful business but one which is built on spiritual lines are completely um at one with one another i think there's a lot of of toffee spoken about in order to be spiritual you've got to be poor wearing a loincloth sitting on the top <laughs> of the mountain um but at the same time for me Yes, I want my business to be very successful, but for me, that's because then I want to be able to utilize that money to create the infrastructure to get to more people and to be able to support those people who can't afford to pay. Um, but exactly. in order to do that, my resources are finite. Um, but I do believe that, for example, what I would do with people adds enormous value it helps them live their life much more richly so they too can be more successful individually uh, within a relationship, professionally, and so on. The other thing about spirituality, I think that, I, it, that we, we're getting into a situation in some areas where I'm more spiritual than you because. Mm -hmm. And it's almost taking over in some areas from organized religion you know where you had to have wear the biggest hat in order to be the best uh, um, and I shout think that's the loudest insane. at church and things hey. Absolutely. Um, and I think that's dangerous I think that spirituality is not about being better than it's about being your best self yeah it's about it's not a competition I can remember very early on in my spiritual journey I went to a, a, a course and I had visualization envy because when they were doing um, guided meditations, people would talk about, you know, I can see a red Indian and he's wearing a great big um, headdress. Well, my red Indian sitting on a donkey. Well, my red Indian sitting on a donkey that's sitting on a giraffe. And I see grey fog. I'm very, very good at grey fog. And initially I was really um, threatened by that. Yeah. But what I recognise is that, I'm somebody, I have a knowing. Things pop into my head. I don't see things. I don't feel things. don't hear things. I just have a knowing. And what I recognize is that that's my way of doing things. It's not better. It's not worse. It's mine. 
And for me, spirituality is not about being in competition. And I would like to think that, you know, as we grow and we and more and more people join um, in this spiritual journey, this spiritual movement, that they will recognize that it's not about, um, I've got to be better than you in mm -hmm. order for you, uh, in order to feel good. About it. And that's why for me, it starts with feeling good about yourself first and the spirituality follows on after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not supposed to uh, judge by appearance or sight. I know like uh, over the years, there've been uh, some people that I've kind of looked up to because of their material that they've put out and i and i still glean from the material but once you meet those people you kind of find out that their character and personality d doesn't match the material which is kind of weird right so you know in some circles they tell you not to meet your uh, your idols and the people that you look up to because you're going to be let down or you have this idea um because it's all yeah. you've been listening to were these songs yeah. and reading material that these are highly spiritual people who only wear the you know the the uh you know the cloth and the cloaks and all they do is fast and pray and meditate and things like that when you find out that these are regular people um you could be let down um and there's this gnostic notion though that we've that we've uh you know seen that uh we're not supposed to enjoy life that we're not supposed to be happy or have fun or be silly or be okay. a human you know they think that every conversation is supposed to be spiritual yeah. and you know I couldn't disagree with you more. For me, spirituality is about being joyful. It's about being full of awe, particularly around things like the natural world and about how amazing people can be. For, for me, spirituality is about light and being playful and recapturing that, you know, the young, the, the absolute amazement that little children have about the world. They're curious and they're creative. And I believe that's what we're destined to be too, and we're being truly spiritual. Mm -hmm. um, what What is the power in finding a tribe, finding people who think like you, people who have the same goals in mind, who are after the same type of 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 uh, desires? I can't remember now who said that you are the sum of the five people that you spend your most most of your time with. But I think for me, being part of a tribe, and that's one of the reasons why I've set up the Thrive Tribe is that having a safe space which is non-judgmental where you can be challenged but not knocked down where people will support you and celebrate with you who will um who are wanting to be the best they can be and also are prepared to help you be the best you can be for me that's an environment that's nurturing and growing it's like putting a plant into soil that's well fertilized and got plenty of sunshine and plenty of water so it can grow at its optimum level. If you try and do this on your own, you can grow. But I think when you get together with like-minded people, particularly if they're like-minded, but they're not, um, they're not exclusive. You know, there are some groups, you know, um, you're a, a people like us or a people like them. That's not what I mean by having yeah. a, a tribe around you. It's about having an all-inclusive tribe, but where, where people recognize that being judgmental about yourself, about others, is not part of what's what's done. Mm -hmm. um, you, you have a lot of stuff on your site about um, the, the theory of self-sabotage. Um, yeah. different people do this in a lot of different ways. I've dealt with it in the past and I don't know what it's, what it stems from. Um, but you once somebody is building something, they're branding, they're becoming successful. They're getting friends. A lot of people will just pull the plug mm -hmm. and undo all that and start over and then do the same thing. Whether, I mean, I've seen people involved with ministries, people starting business, selling stuff. I mean, it just kind of can take over every uh, area and aspect of our life or whatever. And then they'll be comfortable and then they'll pull the plug and just tell everybody off or run everybody off or whatever the case is. Where does self-sabotage come from? I think um, it's quite a complex issue. For me, the first two places to look at, are you fearful of failure or are you fearful of success? And many people are, uh, as many people are fearful of success as they are of failure. Yeah. If I...
will people still like me? And I believe that rejection is often at the core of, I need to stay safe, I need to stay the same, otherwise people will reject me, they'll think I'm arrogant, they'll think that and I'll be separate. Um, so for me, they're the two big strands around self-sabotage. The other thing is that I don't deserve success. And so they'll start to be successful and then, but I mustn't get above myself because I don't deserve it. Yeah. And so things are going too well. So I don't deserve it. So um, I better do something that fulfills that prophecy that I don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, people sabotage by uh, giving up before uh, things are successful, by um, uh, not getting started, or because they believe that things have got to be perfect before they move on rather than good enough. Yeah. And they sabotage by overeating using drugs, shopping, sex, all sorts of uh, ways of, of actually keeping themselves limited. And at the heart of that, I believe that, that by keeping themselves limited, they think they're going to keep themselves safe. But it's an illusion. Because in reality, many people who self-sabotage end up with the very thing they So, for example, within relationships, they sabotage the relationship um, because they don't want to commit or they don't want to get too close or they don't try getting out there and getting into a relationship because they fear being hurt yeah. and they end up being lonely, which is the very thing that they are frightened of in the first place. I've, um, I've seen where you have a lot of people who are creative self-sabotage without even knowing it because they will, uh, be really good at like i said branding or building or you know starting something but they're so creative that their mind is always coming up with new ideas so once they're working on this and they've put all this time effort and energy into it they'll leave that and then find this other idea and then they have another idea and then yeah, three months have passed and they've actually neglected the first thing even though they, you know, meant to see it through. And then they're juggling 17 things in the end. So because, and I, I found it with my life and a lot of people who have, who are just really creative, just coming up with ideas, just pulling them out the ether, you know, but it's about being consistent. So not having good consistency can lead to self-sabotage as well. Small actions consistently taken are what get you sustained success the yeah. grand gesture really <laughs> does it um but i think all, all of us to some extent are guilty of the you know the new bright shiny thing yeah. appears to have more value than the routine stuff that we have to do and there's no doubt if you're if you're setting up a business there's some blooming hard work to be done and often it's on days when you don't feel like doing it you've got to do, or stuff that you don't like doing now, if you've got the money, you can afford to um, get other people in to do those things that you don't like doing, but yes. they love. Yeah. That's the ideal. You're right. But for many people, you have to go through the pain of doing the things you don't like doing in order to create enough revenue to then mm -hmm. start um, yeah. surrounding yourself by a team of yeah. people who do like doing it. Yeah. And that's the ideal, isn't it? If you're not a detail person, find somebody who loves detail. If you're not a finisher, you're a creative, then work with somebody who's not creative but actually likes to see things through to fruition. And so some of it is about creating partnerships that, yeah. that work because you've got a balance within it. Yep. And like I think a lot of people, I, th I think like attracts like, and I've seen that I've got a, I've got a, a, you know, a neat audience, a neat tribe, but most of the people in my tribe are people just like me. They're, they're into the same things I'm into. They're good at the same things I'm good at. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Yeah. And so we kind of would be uh, unbalanced because I'm, I have all these people who can yeah. do what I can do good. And, and building a good team and building a good tribe, you need someone who's good at the stuff that you suck at. Like there's somebody who loves to send emails. There's somebody who loves to uh, organize events. There's someone who loves to do graphic art or do or yeah. handle your web design or whatever the case is to get all of these people uh, in, in your circle to, to help you not work against you, but people who are good at the things that you're not. And that's where you find that you're a strong team that's well-rounded when you, when you find that. But a lot of times those people are just into the same things you are at first, you know? 
And I think that's, again, the strength of the tribe is where you can actually um, work to recognize your strengths as a tribe and to look at, well, okay, as a tribe, are we rounded? Do we have what we need? And if not, there, there are going to be any number of ways where you can bring in that expertise or um, that support um, and using the wealth of the tribe to look at your connections. You know, who do you know who is really good at event planning that you could invite to co-opt into the tribe? Um, you may not be a core member in the sense that, um, that they would naturally find their way actually have got the same core values because I think that's really important but actually have a different skill set mm -hmm. and you know some of the most successful businesses are successful because they've got such a, a breadth of experience and I know when I was running a Uh, interview and a point in order to fill the gaps. I didn't want people who were like me. I wanted people who were better than me at whatever in order to have that well-rounded team. That it was successful has been evidenced by the number of kite marks we got as a school. But you don't start off like that. You have to start from where you're at and work your way towards that. that I think could, some people get disillusioned. Yeah, I think that could kind of play into the self-sabotage too because you have a lot of people who are scared to have people who are better than them at Absolutely, things because yeah. they're a threat. Yeah. That's the whole thing with a building a tribe or creating content and having material or having a book out or whatever the case is because there's always someone who knows more and you feel like if you have that person around, then they could possibly take your audience with them. And I've been a part of religious orders and groups and stuff like that where it was seclusion yeah. and you had to keep everybody to yourself type deal and i'm i've had to kind of you know what i'm saying fight against that in building what i'm doing because i've seen what happens when yeah. you do that right and so that's, that's a that's definite why, way of self-sabotage as well i agree with you but that's why having the same core values is so important they can be have a very different um skill set be a very different approach mm -hmm. but if you've got core values which say I wouldn't po I wouldn't dream of poaching your people. You know, I'm I'm here to support and to grow um, the, the the tribe with you. I'm not here to cherry pick and to um, and to see what I can get out of it. And that, I think that's why it's so important that the core values are are right, because only then do you, can you trust that somebody's not going to come in. And uh, and behave in a way that will be or you point people who were no better than me at the whole range of things. Well, I can't be good at everything. So I wanted the best IT teacher, the best maths, the best English, the best of everything. Um, my job was to grow them, to coordinate them. My strength was in bringing them in and helping them develop and to work together. So I think it's having the, the courage sometimes to say that person can add value to what I'm doing and I'm going to take the chance that that they're better than me um, at doing whatever. And certainly in terms of technology, I'd never have got going if I had to be limited to what I could do. Um, I needed people who had much more expertise and creativity and vision than I would ever have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you really have to trust your discernment is what uh, Rene Ruiz is saying in the chat. There's a lot of opportunists who will come, or, come around you and they're there for what they can get, you know, and... Uh, you know, but you you put to... fail, it's also possible to put fail safes in mm -hmm. that you know you don't open the door and let them right in that you actually get to know them and you give mm -hmm. them a little bit and then uh, so I, I I don't think being um, you know this is being spiritual is not about being um, everybody come in and do what you like I, that goes back to me that you can be discerning you can be a good business person uh, but you can do it with compassion and heart and true spirituality, it does not mean you're a pushover. In mm -hmm. fact, yeah. quite the opposite, because when you really trust your instincts and you trust your gut, 
and you allow yourself that space, you can learn to be very um, accurately discerning about people in a way that if you don't give yourself that time, then you have to wait for the evidence um, that they've let you down. Mm -hmm. um, let me ask you this. So about whenever people are starting to become successful, right? You have a lot of the people, whether it's your tribe, whether it's your friends, whether it's your family too, um, once you start to become successful, you got a lot more eyes on you. There's more income coming in. You're building your you're on, you're, you're on the road to to uh, fulfilling your dreams. And those people who are with you as the water rises, sometimes they can't go with you to the next level. There's a lot of jealousy, a lot mm -hmm. of I deserve it more than you deserve it. or I've been a better steward of of this and that. I've been at it longer. There's a lot of stuff we've dealt with, but. There comes a time where, you know, everybody can't go with you to those higher levels. How do, how, how do we um, survive that purge? And when do we know it's coming? Whether it's like backbite and weird stuff that kind of kind of comes that I think a lot of people have to deal with early on. Again, I, I don't think there's a single answer to this. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it is how you take people with you. Um, money... Um, is an interesting one. Um, it for me, it's just a form of energy, um, and so I think a lot of the difficulties come when people have early success. Is that that they start to be different to how they have been, which is why for me, being your genuine self, being authentic, yeah. has to be something that starts at the beginning and carries right through. And if that's the case, then I think what you're talking about is less less likely to happen. I'm not saying it won't, but it's less likely to happen because you have been genuine with those people all the way through and you've taken them with you. And so the ideal thing is when you engage people in the process and they see that by engaging with you, that they also are part of that success. Yeah. And if you can do that then everybody wins. The challenge, I think, is when uh, people are not necessarily being authentic yeah. and there is that sense of division, um, which yeah. then people become jealous and when people become jealous or feel that they've been badly treated, that they've not been well served, then all sorts of, of um, negative fallout happens. Um, so there's a lot of people out there who... Um, um, don't know what they should be doing. They're just kind of existing. They're kind of on autopilot. They're, I think, uh, I've kind of talked about just being on default. They just exist. They're at a job because they filled out an application. They've been there ten years. They don't know what to do. They don't know. You know, they they you know they may have passions. Maybe they gave up on their passions. They don't know what they want to do with their their life. What is what is a where is a good place for them to start to actually find their purpose of say. Because, you know, the pe people are just existing. They want to help. They want to get involved. They want to do something other than what they're doing right now, but they don't know what that is. I think the first thing is to be curious. Many people I've worked with around finding their purpose come and say, I need to know what my purpose is. I need to know it now. And I suggest to them that actually in the first instance, it's being curious about those things which fill you up, those things that give you a real buzz and identifying them and maybe things that you've done in the past but they also could just as easily be things that you have not yet experienced and so in the first instance to just be to experiment and be curious about what there is out there don't give your job up but but experiment outside your job in your free time until you find something that gives you huge satisfaction and many people see things very much in black or white. I've got to either do this job I hate or I'm yeah. going to do something that's truly fulfilling. Yeah. And I would suggest that for many people that they can, you know, they don't want to give up the income that their job gives them. Yeah. At the same time, they feel that their whole of their life is unfulfilled. And I would suggest, well, in the first instance, look for fulfillment out of your work. And sometimes that's enough. Or you start um, to find fulfillment outside your work and then you gradually do part-time work 
that pays the basic bills and that you grow the things that give you joy alongside. But I think people want very often want an instant fix. Yeah. You know, I've got to find it now. Um, otherwise, I'm not succeeding when the reality is that this is a journey. Yeah. Um, and finding your true purpose, you'll know when you have. You'll absolutely know that that's what you're meant to do. But along the way, have some fun. Be playful. Be mm -hmm. lighthearted about trying different things and seeing what works for you. And then if you can make a business out of it, brilliant. But if not, you can have a very fulfilling life and do your job. They're not mutually exclusive. I think we're in one of the best times now because, you know, through through technology and through actually having the world at your fingertips like we can like we have people all over the world listening to this right now in every country and me and you are, are you know um you know, actually communicating from countries of, aren't we? yeah, yeah we're, we're talking we're talking from you know it's almost dinner time for you so you know um but there's this disconnect there for a lot of people because you know maybe it's because they don't feel like they should have money they're unworthy they shouldn't be having fun. There's a disconnect there. And even for me, like now I'm doing podcasting and, and music and graphic art full time. Those are things that I've done for free for years. And I, because I love doing it, I love to create. I love to do that. Um, and now I'm doing it full time. There had there was a disconnect for me as well. You know, and there's people who think music should be free. And, you know, I, I've done I, I've actually gone and done concerts where. I've paid to get there, you know, and yeah. now people pay to bring me out. So having like that connection there to where you can do what you want for a, a living or make a career or something, get creative with it and to be able to do the things that you love to do for a living where you're not having to punch in a 40, 50, 60 hour work week wishing you weren't there thinking about your hobbies and, and your dreams and your goals like what can you do to turn it to turn that in to that um but you know being able and open to receive payment for your services for your time for your books for your energy whatever it is and actually bringing it to the table and creating it there's a quote that says uh you know those who do what they uh um love for a living they never have to work a day again in their life. It It's so surreal once you get there. Like from being in that hustle and bustle yeah. and from doing all of these jobs that you don't want to be there, you kind of feel like you have to be there versus now I get to wake up every day and do what I love. I'm still in dreamland when it comes to that. And I'm over, I'm over, I'm, I'm over a year into this and it still feels like it's not real. Is that is that possible for, for everybody? Should they pursue that? I know we just kind of discussed it, but, um, you know, we live it. We, I, th I think we're living in a good time where it becomes more possible, at least. Right. I think it's absolutely possible. I I love what I do. Um, I'm of an age where many people would be retiring. I've got I've just setting up a been setting up another business uh, I'm no intention of retiring why because I absolutely love what I do gives me a huge buzz can everybody do it well there's the rub because a you've got to give yourself the, the opportunity to find out find what it is that you are going to enjoy that much because if you're going to give up everything else you don't want it to be well I thought that was it but actually three months in I'm bored with that I don't like all that <laughs> yeah. so you've got to be really clear that this is your passion yeah I think. and then you've got to be a bit brave because letting go of the known letting go of something which um which you know you might not like but actually brings in uh, your you, enough money to live on um takes some courage yeah. but also I think it takes you've got to be committed to it and even if it's something that you love, nobody's going to open the door and throw a shed load of money in at you. You've got to work at it. Now, you can enjoy that work and choose to enjoy that work. And I'm reminded of, uh, you know, I've done a lot of Anthony Robbins stuff, and I was at, at one of his courses, and he was talking about the fact that he'd gone to India to an ashram, and you got your keep free 
if you worked. And he was put in on the job of washing up. Now, he's a big guy. Your, many of your listeners will be familiar with him. Six foot seven. Mm. Um, I mean, when he stood next to the wheelchair, my eyes were leveled his knees. I mean, he is <laughs> humongous. And he was in this tiny little shack washing up millions and uh, quite literally a million um, uh, plates. And the first day he was miserable because he wasn't tall enough. It was very hot, very smelly. And he resented the fact that he'd been given the job of job of washing up. When he went to bed that night, and the bed was about 18 inches too short for him, he talked to himself and said, you know, this isn't, this is, I can choose three weeks of misery, or I can choose to do something in a different way. Mm -hmm. And the next day he got up and was determined to make that the best day ever. So he went in in a great mood. He was singing and joking with everybody. Everybody had a fabulous time. The day went quickly. Yeah. But he was still doing the same job. Mm -hmm. And I think that's true of us all, whatever job we're doing. If you do the best you can do, just to say to my staff, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're a cleaner, you're cleaning the toilets, or you're teaching the most able students. If you do it in the very best way you can, then you're going to do a great job and you're going to get a sense of satisfaction. And I would say to your listeners that, you know, whether it's in the job that you're doing that currently you don't like, that's your choice. But if you're going to do something else, recognize the fact that you're going to have to commit to it and you're going to have to put some efforting in, in order to make it work for you. That doesn't mean you don't enjoy it. My work, I work very hard. I work long hours but I love it. Mm -hmm. That's your choice, isn't it? It goes back to that gratitude like you were talking about at the beginning. Be thankful that you have a job because there's a lot of other people standing in an yeah. unemployment line who would love yeah. to take your place, you know? Yeah. And so Definitely. that whatever it takes to be in the moment, to uh, approach every um, part of your day with an attitude of gratitude, yeah. being stuck in traffic, okay, you know, try to find a way to be happy there. Whatever it is, these things that kind of set us off or push us, push our buttons or, you know, trigger us. We need to understand yeah. that it's triggering me for a reason. And I need to find out why I'm so easily offended. Why, uh, you know, wh whatever it is and try to get past that hurdle so that we're not, you know, just being pushed around by our feelings and emotions or whatever. We can be very uh, mission minded, goal oriented and not have any little thing set us off that can self-sabotage, you know, doing little things like that. And uh, I, I really do think it, 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 it to approach everything with the attitude of gratitude, those jobs that you don't want to be at. Um, you got to do your best until you're going to get the next job. What if you, you just complained and you grumbled all the time, but you're waiting for something better to come. But all you're doing is complaining and grumbling and griping and getting into it with people. You're probably going to carry that with you to the next job, or you're probably going to be stuck in that job a lot longer. That's what I found Absolutely. out. You're the common denominator in every bit of your life. And if you gripe and moan, you've got to live with you. And moreover, so is everybody around you. So, you know, you can create misery wherever you go if you choose to, or you can choose to create a sense of lightness and pos uh, positivity too. And that's your choice. That's good stuff. Well, Gina, I appreciate you coming on, hanging out with me. If you want to go ahead and plug your links where people can check out your website, because you really do have a nice website. And so Thank for you. people who want to check it out, check out some of your courses and things that you have, that'd be awesome. You got a bunch of really cool books and stuff as well. You can go ahead and do that. Thank you. So my website is http and then the little dash hyphen you.com so genuinely hyphen you.com there's also an app a free app genuinely you that people can download and access all of the resources you can download a free digital version of my latest uh, number one best-selling book thriving not surviving the five secret pathways to happiness success and fulfillment you can download a free tv series there are 13 uh, programs in the series and you can download those from for, for free from my website join the thrive tribe um it's a, a monthly membership it's a like-minded group of people who are supportive there's um, interactive coaching there's an interactive facebook loads and loads of resources 
can tap into. And there's a structured sequential program for personal and spiritual development within that. On the website, you'll find all sorts of things. And I you would love your uh, listeners to let us know where they've come from. Send me an email. Um, if you want a, a 15 minute um, free uh, consultation, then you can sign up for that through the website too. So it's genuinely hyphen you.com. Make sure you guys go over there and check out all the really cool stuff that she has on her website. Well, Gina, uh, thank you for coming on, hanging out with me. I really enjoyed it. We'll have to do it again. My absolute pleasure. Thank you very much, and I look forward to it. All right, my friend. Good day to you. Thank you. Bye-bye right. now. Bye. Gina Gardner, ladies and gentlemen. Good stuff. I love it. I love it. I love it. Man, she's been featured. She's putting in work, man. And then hanging out with True Seeker when she can, right? Um, BBC Radio, Reader's Digest, ABC, NBC, KOB4, K KGUN. Uh, she's been on uh, the Wall Street Journal, like all types of stuff, man. You got to create something, man. It's so easy just to sit there, man. It's so easy to kind of w- wish for something greater or just like sit by passive or whatever or looking waiting for opportunity trust me like in the music realm there's so many people who are waiting for that record uh, deal or, or waiting for that producer to to see their youtube video and say oh this guy has potential let me pick him up i don't know why maybe that's how it used to be and they know they got something good that they can share with the world but th- there a lot of people are waiting by passively they're just wanting somebody to put them on and like i've I've been saying you got to create something man this lady has a lot of stuff man a lot of books a lot of videos logos man she's been everywhere like you got to do something with with your time you're wanting to create something you're wanting to brand something well do something you don't know what to do something do something whether it's a podcast like you don't know where to start you got to do something create your logo send your email buy the domain little practical things that you want to, that you need to do to start your business to create that life for you want that, that that you want for yourself i believe everybody should be looking to do what they love for a living like i can't i can't um i can't express the gratitude that i have i try like i just start crying if i start thinking about it it's so crazy man Jonathan uh, Santiago, plant the first seed. Brother, you're on your way, man. You keep doing your thing, man. Keep doing Don't give up. Don't, you know, you're doing a podcast. Well, do it every, do it like, like be consistent. Consistency is key. Let them see you. Let them know that you're there. Start telling people. There's a big gap to to have that idea, to have those visions. And then you got to start telling people <laughs> even before it's here. You got to start telling people your vision and, and start claiming it and speaking it into existence and knowing that it's coming and get people ready. Look, this is what I'm doing. So there's a big fear because the people are afraid of the opinions of men. They're afraid of, of being told no. They'd be, they're afraid of being mocked, ridiculed, or laughed at with their ideas that they're trying to bring to the table. I mean, it's so funny. Like, like we, we've been... You, you have people who laugh and and scoff and make fun of your dream and and they're sitting there getting they have to punch in at a, a, a clock that they at a job they don't like and you know and if you're spending that much time there it's a big deal if you're spending the majority of your life at a job that you don't like you can change that first of all change your attitude make sure that you're thankful that you even have a job let's start there start with that attitude of gratitude use it uh, as, as as fuel to the fire to get you where you want to go because you'll find yourself in a place where you're complaining at a job that you prayed for you asked God for you're at a job you're in a position now you're complaining about a blessing that God has given you and but yet you want something else that was the problem with the prosperity gospel they were never content they always wanted more always wanted more find that vein and stay on it man find what's working find what's what's ha- what, what's 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 helping you get through the day find what makes your heart tick i even talk about that when like find like choosing your spouse don't 
find the person that you can live with, the person you can put up with, or just a good person. Find that person you can't live without and and make that your spouse, right? Find that job that you would do for free. When you can find the, your 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 hobby, your job and then turn it into a full-time income, trust me, it's not going to automatically replace the bills. It's not you're probably going to have to like downsize and downgrade. Usually the transition is it comes through a step of faith, stepping out to prove that you really want it. A lot of times it doesn't come where you're like, okay, I'm going to easily transition into this. Most of the time it doesn't. If it does, glory to God. But most of the time it takes an, an, a, a huge step of faith to step out to create that life that you want for yourself. Um, nothing comes overnight. Consistency definitely pays off. Doing something over and over again, just staying consistent with it, building something. Because you start, eventually you got all this stuff. You got to start somewhere. I've, I'm, I think we're pushing 200 podcasts right now. Um, I started with one, two, three, four, five. Eventually, now I can look back, got a whole arsenal of podcasts, of YouTube videos, of songs. Man, I've got over, now that I look back, I got over 200 songs. Like, I had to start with one. Eventually, they add up. I had to create a logo. Had to create a website. Now I have a logo and a website and 200 songs and videos and all of this stuff. And I've kind of got this stuff that I've been branding and pushing for years. And it starts stacking. It starts somewhere. Nobody's just going to uh, give you anything, whatever it is. But approach it with an attitude of gratitude, man. And like I said, hard work always pays off, man. I'm really uh, um. In a, in a place that I'm enjoying right now. And it's still, like I said, it's still kind of like a dream, man. Um, and there's so many quotes and songs about being able to do what you want for a living and then not even, and not never have to work again in, in your life. It seems so far out of reach for so many people though, right? Oh yeah, True Seeker did it. Yeah, everything lined up. I was consistent and that was probably it. I didn't give up. It's probably the only thing I've done different than you. I didn't gave up. I didn't give up. You gave up a long time ago. Recapture that dream, man. Don't give up. Stay with it. Don't pick. Don't be a jack of all trades and a master of none. Find something that you do. Do it good. Do it well. Stick with it. A jack. You do a lot of. Uh, you do a lot of stuff, mediocrely. You know, I, I, I've i been there, kind of there a little bit now, just because the fact that I've done everything myself, like I needed to shoot my own videos, I needed to record my own songs, I needed to create my own website, like I learned how to do all that stuff myself, I didn't have the money to spend to go uh, pay people to do it, so I learned how to do it myself, where I can do it for free. And now stuff that I've done for free, and I've helped people, and I've built my own website, and booked my own shows, and all of this recording and stuff now i get paid to that stuff now there's a price on it and sometimes there's people who there's that disconnect you got to get past it stuff that you would do for free but now you're charging for well it took you years to find that stuff out but look at this there's people who are blessed there's people who are anointed to give they have the ministry of helps there's people who can't do what you're doing. There's people who can't get out there and do it, but they're willing to support you. They're willing to to help fund what you're doing. I'm seeing that out the out the woodwork too, and that blows my mind. And I, and I've talked, and I and I feel <laughs> feel I feel a certain type of way of saying this, but like some of my my music, like the album 333, and all of this stuff, man, I've been supported by older white women who I don't, who probably really don't like rap music, but they see the impact on it and they support it. Right. You, and there's people who want to help. There's people, that's their ministry. That's their job is to help you. But what are you doing? You got to do something. Are you helping people? Are you reaching out? It's everybody who's got their hands out. They want something. They're looking for something. They're looking for a mention. They're looking for a retweet. But you ain't never helped nobody. Look. 
to whom much is given, much is required. You have to be a good steward with whatever you have. No matter what level you are. Just starting out, you got to maintain it. Don't let your giftings and your talents bring you to a place that your character can't carry you. Trust me, when I was talking about meeting your idols or, or the people that you look up to, a lot of times I wish I wouldn't have met these people, right? You meet them and you're let down. Like I've been, I've had like the people I looked up to on like a music level steal money from me. Finally met them, you know, and I, ooh, it's bad. A lot of people, man, a lot of like big name people and stuff. They just, man, they're just not good in business, right? Don't do that. Keep your hands clean and your heart pure. Protect your name, man. Protect your integrity. Protect your legacy. It's going down. You can do it, man. Whatever it is. Whatever it is, man. And like I said, like I remember, like we I started doing um like one on one um consultations where I would lead people in guided meditations and we'd do uh, energy healing and I'd spend an allotted amount of time with someone to do a private consultation. And, um, and I started charging for that. I started charging for my time. And there was a bunch of like people in the Christian community who were like, Oh, you're, you're, you're charging for, uh, uh, to pray for people. You're charging to pray. And all of this weird stuff that these people have this disconnect with, and they don't feel because they, it's stuff that they do for free. Right. Or they think like it's all supposed to be for free. Like everything just supposed to be a handout. I get messages from people every, Almost every time that I that I upload a, a a video of my song from uh that's available on Patreon, like it gets a dislike because people feel like that I should put it on YouTube for the world for free. And you have to pay, I have to pay for everything else. I have to pay for the beat. I have to pay for uh, the graphic art. I have to pay for a lot of that stuff when I start branching out because I do a lot of that. I have to pay for that stuff, but yet you deserve the song for free. And you did not put in on this, man. You got to put in on it, man. You got to help somebody, man. It's so funny. People, I've gotten messages. Or people are mad that I charge for my music. Music is an art form. It's supposed to be free. It's an expression. It's crazy. Well, it wasn't free to create, sir. Sir, it was not free to create. Tell, you know, it is crazy, man. Um, But it's always about you. Like we're talking about bringing it back to the authentic self. Um, it's about you knowing who you are, being authentic, bringing it to the table. And and I'm telling you, it's going to make a lot of people uncomfortable. They're uncomfortable around somebody who's not cocky, but confident. You know who you are. It's going to make a lot of people uncomfortable. As you move up levels and levels, not everybody can go with you. Not everybody can hang. The people in your boat with you, they're paddling against you. They're hoping you fail, but yet you're promoting them. They've never, they've never helped you, right? On a... Um, I shared this video earlier. I'm going to play it. Hopefully it's not copyrighted. I won't get pulled off of YouTube. But I'm going to play this clip right quick. I, I, I listened to it this morning, right? I'm going to share this. So let me see on YouTube. Bah, bah, bah. Let's see. It's not on YouTube. It's on Facebook. So, Okay. Here you go. You can see it. Hopefully you can hear it. I'm going to play this. Listen, y'all are going to stop saying you are people's friends when you do not support them when they start businesses. When your friends start businesses and drop music and open online stores and drop books and merchandise and start a podcast, support them. Just like support them. You support these celebrities you don't know because when Beyonce drops, y'all go buy it. When Rihanna drops, y'all go buy it. And I bet y'all got Cardi B's album. I bet y'all got the Migos album. So when your friends drop things, support them financially. Support your friends who are starting businesses. Hello? Support people, man. Real recognize real, man. You got to support people. <clears throat> That's the funniest thing to me 
it, it's kind of offensive, but you got people in your corner who who are not helping, man. It's so weird. Like, I've started Patreon. I've probably had Patreon for maybe two years or so now, maybe a little bit more. And I got complete strangers, bro, from all over the world supporting my work. But the people that I have closest to me, they haven't even joined. Like, it, this was my attempt to to step out. This is my attempt to bring this to the table. I don't know how much I'm going to have in my bank account. They got just weird excuses. I don't know if I'll have $5, blah, 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 blah. I don't know if i have a dollar. It's like, okay, I've been there too. But guess what? That's not a good place to be. That's not a good place to be, to know, to not know if you're going to have $5 in your account. We need to talk, or you need to go, you need to, go to uh, genuine, genuinely-u.com and speak to Miss Gina. That's not a good place to be. To have all of these people, and it's really weird, from all over the world s- supporting me, believing in my work, but the people who say they do, you ain't seen them. They just say it. Oh, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you rise, saying, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Hold on. You did not put in on this, man. You're not helping. You're not helping. Well, I help in other ways, blah, blah, blah. This is the way I, I need you to get help, need you to give. I need you to help. A dollar. A dollar. One dollar, man. You can't do a dollar. Oh, I'll give you money if you need it. It's a dollar, man. Five dollars, ten dollars. What? Trust me, I have people on all over the world, literally all over the world, supporting. I'm elated. I'm blown away. But it makes you think twice about the people who are so called in your corner, rooting you on, but they're not helping. They're ready to eat from your plate, but when I shine, we shine. Work ethic, we all grind. You got to do something, man. No matter who you are. It's facts. Could you support you? You carrying dead weight in your circle. You carrying dead weight. Everybody's different. I I get that. You can't. You got to stop letting people ride off your coattail, man. I've done it, man. Y'all know about people in Mobile who wouldn't have had a chance without me. Let's say that. And uh, and I've put them out, and I've done a lot of stuff, a lot of carrying. And 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 the audience knows who they are, these people. But I don't get the same love back from them. You know. I don't know what it is, man. Maybe that's a self-sabotage thing where you want you want to help people, you know, you want you feel like you carrying people or whatever. I enjoy helping people though, man. No matter where you are, but there's there comes a point where you get you helping people who won't help themselves, man. You're trying to help people. See, that's the the bad thing about being a visionary. That's the bad thing about being empathic and wanting to help everybody. Is you're a seer. You can see the potential in people that they can't see in themselves. That's a good thing. But you're 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 seeing this potential in people where they they don't want they don't care. They don't want the likes of it. They don't want not, they don't want nothing to do with it. You're seeing this person not as they are, but the person that but that they can be. It's prophetic. It's a gifting, but it, it's also be a curse. Um, is that Ferris Smeller uh, says uh, Illuminati Congo for a good talk on your show. Um, I've already had a, uh, I've had Congo on here. We we did an episode. It was really good. I've done two. I've done two episodes with him. One one is posted though. The other one was a really old one, years ago when I was under a different name, The Awakening. I love Illuminati Congo. Um, I'm gonna just jump for some questions here. Ali says, "Word, I'm learning. It's truth." Chris Garner says, that's why I don't have a circle anymore. Yeah, man. It's just, you know, eventually, man. Binary Watcher says, that's because you're a watcher and it's a curse. Yeah, it's a curse, man. But you have to you have to look at it and see how it can be a blessing in disguise. You know, and you can help people. And I've helped a lot of people and uh, and we all have. Right. But um, 
we got to stop helping people who don't want it. You know, you're trying to like, you used to try, like trying to give knowledge, trying to bring people to church or whatever it is, whatever you're trying to do to help people that the person don't want to the help. They'll use you though. They'll show up quick with their hand out, but they just ain't putting nothing in the pot. Diamonds in the rough, Renee says. They ain't putting nothing in the pot. It don't take much. It don't take much. Just do something. And be consistent with it. That's it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, just take some questions here. If anybody has any questions, anything that I didn't touch on today, um, anything you wanted to share, just let me know. I'm going to give it about a minute or two to see if anybody has any questions, and I'll try to jump to that. Other than that, man, I've really, um, I was kind of, I was a few minutes late go, going into this interview. Um, well, at least I sent her the link kind of late. It was because I'm like, I went back to something that I started. I'm working on something right now. Um, and I just, I just been writing, um, working on pretty much a guided meditation, which is going to be an experience taking you, uh, into the presence of God through the throne room. Uh, through uh, entering in through the tab tabernacle, being almost being scripturally sound in the layout and the viewpoints and in the expressions and the feelings and the things that were around taking you through the tabernacle into the throne room, into the holies of holies, being um, in the presence of God. So I'm working on that right now. And I touched it several months ago. I started it, but I've just been. Like I said, those creative people have all those different ideas and I have a bunch of those things where I started and um, I didn't finish. So I went back to that a while ago and um, the Lord spoke to my heart um, last week. And it was, this was a word that I shared in the School of the Mystics. It was for whoever would receive it. But it was as you write it down, more is going to come. You don't know where to start. Just start. I don't know where. Start somewhere. As you start, as you start writing things down, being vocal, all the other stuff's going to keep coming. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. It's going to keep coming. And uh, I started writing this morning, and then I couldn't stop. I was immersed into it in this visual and God speaking. Say this to him. Say that. It's going to be beautiful, man. So hopefully that is something that I can uh, finish pretty soon and get that out for you guys. I started on it several months ago, just came back to it, and uh, it's just flowing. So I want it to be done right, but uh, hopefully it's going to create a experience. Like we can easily pray. We can easily um, tap in, but it's going to – I want to do sounds and not really the visuals. The visuals is going to be you going in with your eyes closed, taking this journey. But I'd like to uh, – to add sound effects and things like that through it as you're going into this visual uh, experience through the throne room of heaven. It's going to be good. Um, someone's asking uh, uh, crypto donations in the future of fund uh, is the future of fundraising. Man, I, I know I've been having a lot of people hit me up about cr uh, crypto, man. Like, I don't really know much about it, man. It's supposed to be people are millionaires in crypto, but. I don't even know how that converts over to real dollars or, or buying stuff. So I don't I don't have that set up, man. Sorry about that. I do have a PayPal. <laughs> um, Binary says, I have a question. How exactly do you want people to help you, Mr. True Seeker? Man, there's a lot of ways. But um, there's one way that I, I've put up now, and I've been kind of vocal about it on the show. And I haven't really had – I've had people flirt with the idea, but nobody actually – uh, be in a place where they can do it. And I'm willing to pay people to help me like with this. I need snippets made out of the podcast. You know what I'm saying? Like I need people who are one familiar with the content. I tried to pay Indian people to do this um, from different uh, websites. Right. And they were just making random clips for me. They didn't understand the content. I need people to listen and say, oh, that would be a good snippet or listen to the Jordan Maxwell interview and say, oh man, that's a good clip. Cause like a lot of people don't have time to sit down and listen to a three hour podcast or a two hour, whatever. A lot of people don't have that time, but they do have time to sit down and listen to a, a five minute excerpt or two minute or 10 minute or whatever. So I need people to uh, create video excerpts from the podcast and I'm willing to pay. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm willing to pay per 
um, per clip or something, right? If it's going to help, if it's going to promote and things like that. So if anybody uh, is able to do that um, and you want to do that, and I will teach you how to do that. You need a computer or a cell phone and you need time. It takes time to listen and then to, okay, from 10 minutes to 12 minutes, he talked about the Kundalini. I'm going to make a clip and I'm going to call it Kundalini in Jesus. Three minute clip by y'all. Okay. From 10 minutes to 17 minutes. He talked about this and make video clips out of it to kind of promote the podcast. That takes a lot of time. That's a, it's almost a full time thing in it, in and of itself. And so like we were talking about finding people who uh, can do the things that you suck at, you know, I need, I need help with that. So anyway, that's what, that's one thing I need help with. Um, everything else just kind of comes with the territory about just kind of being vocal, sharing and, you know, getting it out to people is a big one. But as far as like physically what I need help with, that's what I need help with. And I, like I said, I'm willing to teach somebody, but you need to have time. You know, you need to have time to do it. A lot of people don't have time. They're trying to find time. So but some people have time on their hands. So at the one with, who have time on their hands, the, the person who just watches YouTube videos and is in a position where that just, that's what they want to do. If you need the program, I can send you the programs and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, you have not because you ask not. That's what I need help with. And I've, I'm just asking for help. And uh, so email me, hit me up, get at me on Discord, whatever it is, whoever can help with that. That's what I need help with. Um. And it, it, it allows me to create, you know what I'm saying, more content versus going back and, and doing doing that, um, which that's content in, in and of itself to actually go back and create something that didn't exist. The snippet, maybe a new thumbnail. Wow, you have a, a, a video snippet. Uh, sometimes the snippets get more views than the actual interview, right? So uh, it's just about being tactful, reaching out to people, using keywords, being interesting, those type of things. So, yeah. That's what I need help with. Anybody who wants to do that, hit me up. But yeah, again, man, thank that. Thanks everybody for the support. I don't, I don't feel like um, um, that it's owed. You know what I'm saying? And I hope me being just talking about this is just me being open. You know what I'm saying? You got to look at the people in your circle. You got to look at the people supporting you. Um, there, people want to support you. Whatever you're building, like I want to support you. Especially if you're in my circle, and I do. People in my circle, they I give them free counsel, free advice. This is how you do that. You want to do a podcast? Hey, do this, fix that stuff that I would charge other people for. Um, so it's about having that squad, that group of people that you can build with, and uh, each one reach one. And so uh, helping people get this information out, man. Helping people, you know what I'm saying? Love on people, set them free with truth, you know, wh whatever a aspect it is that you bring to the table, um, we can cover more ground together. So that's what it's about, about building with your tribe. And we have uh, technology in place. We have discord. We got a lot of really cool stuff where people can, uh, stay in each other's business, man, day to day. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and really do life together. Um, that's what it's about. So, uh, the Discord app is there. We do the School of the Mystics on Thursday nights. Uh, all that info should be in the description if you'd like to uh, check it out. So, yeah, make sure y'all do that. So, again, thank you guys for supporting, man. We're coming up on the end of 2018. 2018 has, has been a blessing. Um, we created a lot of really cool stuff, helped a lot of people, and um, plan on con continuing to do the same things. Continue continuing like i got new music that's about to drop it's a bunch of new music already on patreon but it's getting closer to be to being done and now i'm going to probably try to shoot videos for some of it and uh work on new stuff we're going to get this um um content out i'm right i'm in the midst of writing a book which it's, it's going to be good <laughs> i don't know how long that's going to take but it's coming um uh, doing the book doing some guided meditations and stuff and just trying to find creative aspects and ways to get this info out, making videos, man. A lot of people have been touched by, um, you know, some of the videos that I've made were just kind of explaining some topics and then putting videos and, uh, you know what I'm saying, visuals for it too. Uh, that stuff gets a lot of traction. So people want more of that and I've got some ideas. So I'm going to keep working, keep doing it and uh, not looking back. So if you want to help, uh, get plugged in with me. Uh, somebody's asking. Jeremy Pick is asking, "What's your um, email?" Truthseeker7 at Yahoo. 
Hit me up at TrueSeeker7 at Yahoo if you want to talk to me. Join the Discord. I'd rather... It's easier. I'd rather talk to you on Discord than email. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'd rather talk to you on the phone than text message, you know? Um, that's what I do. You know? You would be sitting there for 20 minutes going back and forth on a text message and something we can say in three minutes. You know what I'm saying? So that's just that's just me. Anyway, all that stuff's there. With that, I'm going to say peace and shalom. We've got some more exciting shows planned for you guys coming up this week. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Peace and shalom. Your will is so much higher than mine. So much higher than mine. Your will is so much higher than mine. Well, that does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.